First of all, get yourself a pan. You know what to say about the pan? I've got, um, I think probably see, I've got like a, a huge pan here. But you could use, um, you, there's also quite a lot in this. You need a, a, a large saucepan or a deep frying pan, right? One with deep sides, not a little thin thing. You want deep sides, right? So make a decision. Once you've decided what pan you're going to use, you want some oil, tablespoon, not much. Just literally to fry the onions um, in. You can turn the heat on. And you want a little bit of butter as well. All right, now the reason for that is the butter will actually help the onions caramelize and bring out their natural flavor. All right, again, again don't get mental. It's a 20, 20, you want about 12 grams of butter, which is literally just over a tablespoon. All right, if you see how much I've got on the end of my knife there, it's a really small amount. All right, so that goes in. Right, so we're gonna chop the onions. If I show you how to do it, I think I've done this a few times on video, but I'll try to show you again very quickly. So the onion grows in the ground like that. That's the root, the fluffy bit at the bottom. Don't touch that at all, all right? So you're gonna take the top off. The top is this part here. Take that off. Use a sharp knife, but use a knife that you're happy with, right? If you're happy with a small knife, that's fine. Um, any oil, um, you can use olive oil or vegetable oil. oil. I've got olive oil just because I have it. Once you take the top off, you put the that flat bottom on a board. And don't forget, by the way, a bit of kitchen roll or something or tissue under the board that just stops it slipping about. You're going to cut now this onion in half through the root. So the root's there, you're going to cut through the root. Don't forget, you've got to think of the bridge hold and the claw grip, right? So make your hand like a bridge. Hold the onion and you're going to cut down. I'm going to switch knives quickly because this one's a little bit pants. I've got time to sharpen it, I've got another one here. Right, so then you've got some corners, just peel. If it's a bit kind of sticky, if you know what I mean, if it does not peel easy, just go to the next layer. All right, I know you're wasting a bit, but that's all good. So I peel, I've got a bin hidden around the corner. So I peel the onion. You haven't got to worry too much about this warming up. All right, and you'll see what I mean in a second, because we're going to cook the onions fairly low. Right, you want to bring out that natural sweetness. And all we're going to do is literally, it doesn't really matter how you do these, to be honest. I'm going to do mine in half moon shapes. All right, so to do that, lay it flat and just chop down. This is where you use the claw grip, right? So you put your fingers on the onion to hold it still. Just cut the other half. So both onions. Right, and that's going to go in. I'm now going to do the second onion. So again, top off. That bit you just cut, you know, the flat bit on the board. Cut through the root using the bridge hold. Peel. Just by the way, I know this is logical, but I've got to make a bit of my onion, so don't use it. You know, you just cut it off. It's all natural, like vegetables, so it's just, you know, for whatever reason, it went a bit odd. All right, so chop. Boom. Just so by the way, there is absolutely nothing you can do about your eyes um, watering. It's life. People, you see stuff about, you know, you put, I don't know, put it in the fridge or, it's a lot of ultra rigor, all right? You can't do anything at all, okay? So, uh, yeah, a couple of onions, carrots. This is one of these things where actually it's fairly flexible. Uh, well, that's right, onions, my eyes are watering. One thing you don't do, students do all the time, and say, oh my eyes, I rub their eyes. Not that you've got onion juice on your hands. So one good thing to do is to wash your hands and then use a bit of tissue to dab your eyes. If your eyes are watery, that's my eye, actually. Right, you'll hear my onion sizzling. That medium, 
And that's a good question. So at the minute, mine is sizzling but quite fast. I'm trying to soften these rather than brown these. So I'm gonna turn that down. That half power, I don't know what you're cooking on, whether gas or electric. But I'm gonna turn mine down to half power. And we're gonna cook those while we're making the banana, all right? And then we finish off the Okay, is that one all right? I'm just going to pull this down slightly so you can see. Any issues? Hi, Savinka. So, two onions fried gently with some oil and a little bit of butter. You're just frying them until they're soft, all right? Again, you're in control, all right? So if it's sounding too noisy, like mine is a little bit, just turn it down, right? You want a gentle, gentle fry, okay? We're now gonna do the naan, all right? So don't panic, that's fine. If you're just gonna just say in the course of, yeah, in the course of this frying, um, if it's getting too brown, then take them off, all right? It's not an issue at all. Carries don't really want any color at all. You just want them cooked, you don't want them brown. Brown would give you sort of a burnt flavor. So if you're worried about them cooking too quick, turn the heat down, all right? So whatever heat you've got it on. I'm gonna turn mine down, mine will too. As I'm an electric, mine will take a little bit longer to be reactive to that and cool down. Right, is that one good? Let's go on to the naan then. I need to remind myself. So in a bowl, I've already weighed mine and cheated. You've got 250 grams of plain flour, all right? Plain flour. I'll say this a few times, but 250 of plain flour. In there, goes two teaspoons. I'm sick, I need to remind myself actually. Two teaspoons of sugar. pinch of salt, some baking powder, which actually I forgot, so we're back in a minute, get the baking powder. So, um, it's half a teaspoon of baking powder, which is not much at all. But what that would do is, just by the way, notice it's plain flour, um, it will actually kind of add a slight raising agent. I'll repeat all this in one second, okay? So let's do the dry stuff first, because that's easier. So in the bowl, I have got 250 grams of plain flour, two teaspoons, so the small spoon of uh, sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, or a pinch of salt, it's quite a decent pinch of salt, it's fine and half a teaspoon of baking powder. All right, is that okay? Is everyone good with that? Please say if you're not now, keep your eye on your onions, stir them around. Remember, we want these cooked, but not brown, because that would give you sort of pot, a, a bit of a bitter flavor. I'll show you mine at the moment. Okay. You wanna cook those gently, gently. Anything repeated, is everyone okay? Uh, baking powder is half a teaspoon. All right, so 250 of flour, two teaspoons of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, or a decent pinch, half a teaspoon of baking powder. All right? Cool. What we're now gonna do is In a measuring jug, excellent. In a measuring jug, uh, we want 120 mils of milk. Now it's just slightly annoying to measure this. If you've got a, re a, a regular measuring jug, because if you've got, wrong way around, if you've got the milliliters, you've got like 100 and a little line for the 50, so you kind of got kind of work it out. If you've, so often scales, where's my scales gone? I'll turn my scales on. 
Often the scale, sometimes with scales, you have a little, um, another button on the side and it says unit. And that goes around like grams, ounces, fluid ounces, milliliters. And what you can do is actually click it around to milliliters and then measure the milk that way. Anyway, you need 120 milliliters of milk. And in there, we're gonna add two tablespoons of oil. To be honest, any oil you've got, olive oil, vegetable oil, just a, just a non-flavoured oil, okay? So 120 of milk, two tablespoons of oil. I'm gonna pause there just for a second. Get rid of that. Make sure your onions are okay. Again, be, you know, take them off if they're getting a bit, bit warm, or a bit brown even, or too brown. Mine are fine. Is everyone all right? Wicked. Right, so, um, Karis, 250 of flour, two teaspoons of sugar, one tea, half a teaspoon, sorry, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking powder. In the jug, the wet ingredients, we've got 120 milliliters of milk, so one, two, zero of milk, and two tablespoons of oil. Is that okay with everyone? Is everyone good? Now, logically, A goes into B, right? So, pour that in, put this around here. I probably would use a, use a spoon initially. And what we're going to do is mix that till it forms, guess what, a dough. We will get this out and knead it, but not yet, all right? Because we're going to um, so scrape all that off. What I would do is uh, just get your hands in and squeeze it together. It's just it's much better that way, but keep it in the bowl for the time being, okay? Because otherwise it will, um, you'll make a mess and just clear, clear up and everything. All right, so all we're looking for there is a basic, I'll show you quickly, just a basic dough that's in the bottom of the bowl. All right, so no flour in the bottom, as you can see. No flour in the bottom, but a basic dough. We can actually leave that to the side. And then we're gonna carry on with the curry, all right, and get that cooking. Is everyone all right? I'm gonna give one second just to clean my hands. Right. It will be written down later, it just isn't now. All right, so in the bowl, Oliver, 250 of flour, two teaspoons of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of bicarb, uh, um, sorry, baking powder, sorry, not bicarb. Okay, and then in a jug, one, two milliliters of milk, 120 milliliters of milk, and two tablespoons of oil, any oil that you happen to have, okay? So, we're gonna carry on with the curry now. So now you made that, all good. To be honest, the next bit's really easy, all right, for this. You should literally just chucking it in with a bit of preparation. So we've got the onions here, see? They're not, they're maybe a slight tinge of brown, but you don't want them burnt, that's what I'm saying, because otherwise it will actually taste burnt. What we're now gonna do, it probably seems a little bit unusual. We add the curry paste now, because this curry paste has numerous spices and herbs and oils in, and you actually fry it for a really low, about five minutes, and that brings all the flavor out. If you just put it in at the last minute, by my measuring spoon, what will happen is you won't get all the flavor that actually you want, okay? So, we want, where are we? Three tablespoons. If you, you've done the recipe that I've said on here, three tablespoons of tikka masala paste. So, one tablespoon, two tablespoons, three tablespoons, and the third tablespoon. Can I stress at this point, the heat must be low. If it's too high, then what will happen is the paste will burn on the bottom and it will literally just stick to the bottom, which is obviously not what you want. All right, let's give that a mix in. So what I'm doing, if I show you, so I'm mixing in with the onions. And then I'm just going to allow that to cook 
for five minutes while I'm getting the chicken or while we're getting the chicken chopped up. Okay, so just leave that to cook. I'm going to bring this down slightly. It's popping up. Okay. Is that one good? I hope you are. Right, so what we're now going to do then. Oops, put that on. There's a the chicken. We're now going to get a chicken ready. If you've got a separate board, a red board, that's amazing. If you don't, then if you use a regular board, you can cut the chicken up. Um, you'll need to wash it after you do anything else, all right? Because most lot of houses don't have a separate red chopping board. So with the chicken, I've got quite a few chicken breasts here. I think like I said before, when we use chicken, have a look at the chicken and make sure there's no bone or no sinew, which no people would find revolting. On here, for example, there's a little bit there, which I'm gonna cut off because that can be a little bit tough. All right, so what we can do now then, it's up to you actually completely. You could actually just put these in whole or you can cut them into strips. Okay. The pot, carries you to leave it very gently frying on the hob. I'm gonna show you, all right? So that's what the mixtures look like, but it's still cooking because we're cooking all the spices together. Right, I'm gonna cut mine into strips or goujons. What I'm then gonna do is cut it this way. So I'm getting cubes, but actually it's down to you. And you can have small cubes, big cubes, doesn't really matter. This is going to cook in the sauce for about 20 minutes, maybe a bit less. All right. So there's one. Okay, is everyone all right? Make sure you're telling me if there's an issue. So a reminder, you can cut the chicken how you like, but just be consistent with it, as in don't put in small bits and then put in a massive chunk because obviously the chunk's gonna take much longer uh, than uh, small bits. Right. I'm running out of room on my chopping board, so actually, I'm gonna look for one second, I'm just gonna put this straight in. Doesn't matter, it's absolutely fine. Right, put it in there, because you're not going to take over just cutting up the chicken, are you? So that's all good. Just cutting off the dodgy bits. Okay, last one, for me at least. Okay, goes in the bin. At this point, is that okay by the way? Thick enough to hold together. Yep, well done. Sabinka, so see, second in command, always was. All right, so what you can do now then is, Sabinka's next student, by the way, next catering student who did an amazing job. Once the chicken goes in, you just stir it around with the spices, all right? And if, you absolutely, if it's on low heat, it's gonna be absolutely fine. So you wanna get all that mixed around together. Okay, what I'm now gonna do, hopefully logically, is clean the table, clean the board, we've got to chop the pepper up. All right, so I'm gonna do that over here quickly. Still cutting the chicken, that's fine. Give me one second, I can sort myself out and then I'll check what I've 
if I need to respond to anything. Firm, not sticky. So Oliver, if you want to have a quick look. So it's just like a dough. I know it sounds logical, but nothing in the bowl. So like a, a bread, which it is. All right, everyone all right on YouTube? Any issues? Okay, fine. That's weird, I want to say it's restricted on YouTube. You can see 13 people watching, but still. Right. Yeah, 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 that's fine. So at the moment, I've got, so in, I've, in, my, in mine, I've got the onions, the paste I've cooked out for five minutes, I plonk the chicken in, all good. It literally is now gonna be a combining um, effort. Okay, so what we're gonna do now then, very quickly, I'm gonna turn the heat up, um, actually, because we now need to start getting this um, frying a bit more, all right, so I'm turning my heat up. What we're now gonna do, we're gonna watch very quickly, we've got a pepper, People do peppers in a hundred different ways. There's no right way. You'll often see someone cut it through the middle and just take the seeds out and chop it up. Personally, I always teach that a pepper's got four sides. I know it hasn't, but pretend it has. So what you would do is, if I stand this side, is you chop down on one side, you turn it, you chop the other side, turn it, chop the other side, and then you chop the final side. Then you've just got the bottom there, and then that's all you throw away. Okay, so you haven't got to worry about taking the pith out. The pith is the white bit, which is a bit bitter. All we're gonna do is chop these into nice little squares, all right, as well. And guess what? Add those to our chicken, onion, and tikka mix. Again, it's all flexible, any size you want. Um, I mean, traditionally, uh, peppers are cut into squares for Indian cooking, which now sounds weird. But for Indian, um, for Mexican, it's stripped normally. It doesn't really matter. All right, so my pepper is going in. And I'm gonna mix that in as well, all right? So at this point, if you turn your heat down, so you're worried about it burning, and you're now adding the chicken and the pepper, you now need to turn the heat up, right? We now need a bit of heat in there to start frying everything together. Okay. No, it shouldn't be getting dry. In a second, we're going to um, add some liquid in a second, right? So actually, you should all be fine. I'm going to give mine a second just to heat up. What you can get ready is we need um, one tin of tomatoes open. Don't, don't add them yet. I line up what's going to go in on the. Oh. Oh, great, all right. So you can see on the screen. How are we doing? Are we all good? Well, that's the binky absolutely right. Well done. Good job. Um, right, so we're frying. I'm going to turn my heat up. So what you should hear, if I shut up for a second, you want to hear that now frying, okay? So real quick recap. I oil and a um, little bit of oil, a little bit of butter in there. I fried the onions till they're soft. We then added three tablespoons of the tikka paste. And we fried that also. Now I've added in the chicken and the pepper, the chopped up bell pepper, and we're frying that all together now. Okay. What you want to try and do is you actually want all the chicken sealed if possible. All right, because it will give it a much better flavor. So what, I'm, what I mean by sealed is, I'll show you this bit here, so the chicken will actually go white, so that's not quite done. Oh, it's hard to see, to be fair, with the paste. But you want a real good sizzle sound. Remember, you always cook, don't just cook with what it says in the ingredients, you cook with your eyes and your, um, your, your hearing as well. All right, so if you, you can hear it 
frying and see it frying, and then we're all good. You haven't even done that? Marvellous. All right, well, if all goes wrong, you can blame me. No problem. <laughs> okay, so I think we're kind of at the point now. What you'll find is if it does start to stick, which is possible because of the, um, you know, it just kind of does, you start adding the liquid, all right? So it's gonna be really clear. So the liquid then, if you wanna look for one second, is one tin of tomatoes. Boom. It's two tablespoons of the tomato puree. These little pre-done pots are basically two, um, two tablespoons. And it's two tablespoons of the mango chutney. All right, so let me just get. Yeah. I put two. Come on, I said the rest of now. I think it's in between one and one and two tablespoons of chutney. That gives it a nice fruity edge. So a couple of. I know it's a teaspoon. A couple of, couple of tablespoons of that. Now you probably need to. Oh, blimey! It's really dry. That's not right. What we're now going to add then is 100 millilitres of just plain water. Just regular water, 100 millilitres. Okay, so I'll recap that in a second. Let's get my water in. Hundred mils of water goes in. Boom. Stir around. Let me just move the camera slightly. Keep. All right, hope you can see that. There we go. Now, this is really important. Can I just, if you haven't listened at any point, now's the time. When you put the liquid in, all right, so a tin of tomatoes, two tablespoons of tomato puree, two tablespoons of mango chutney, and 100 milliliters of water, just cold water, you, when you put it in, it needs to boil. You hear my boiling? Don't boil it all the time or you'll burn it on the bottom. So what you now need to do is turn the heat down again and you want a simmer. All right, now a simmer is where there's the odd look, 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 okay? Yeah, you put the, if you've got passata, passata's fine. So um, it's all the same, it's all tomato. All right, and that's gonna form the juice. All right, so one tin of tomatoes, two tablespoons of tomato puree, two tablespoons of the mango chutney and then 100 millilitres of water. Allow it to boil, so you can see it boiling, and then you must turn the heat down. If you don't turn it down to a simmer, it will burn on the bottom, trust me. All right, I mean, it will taste a bit strange. Again, you are in control. Now, we're gonna put a timer on. This will, should take, it does depend on the size of your chicken, this will take around 10 minutes, right, to make sure that the chicken's all cooked all the way through. All right, I'm gonna put Alexa on, if you can hear me. Alexa, set time for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, starting now. Hopefully you heard that. All right. Doesn't really matter, Jacob. So um, as long as it's in there and the chicken's starting to seal a little bit, so it's going from the raw state and you can see a little bit of color, not colour, but white on the chicken, that's fine. You can just, you can just add the liquid um, then, all right? I stress again, once you've, once you've seen it boiling and actually bubbling, not just steaming, but actually bubbles, you must turn it down much gentler. You still, however, want to see activity in the saucepan, right? If you're just sitting there looking at it, even it's not cooking. So it does need a little kind of blub, 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 every so often, so turn it down. Again, you're in control, right? So if you find it, it's sticking a little bit on the bottom and it's getting a bit dry, some of the liquid's evaporating, add some more water, just add a splash of, don't add tons, but add like a tablespoon of water, or a few tablespoons at a time. Okay, hopefully that's all right with everyone. Cool. So there we go. So we've got a 10 minute timer on. We should all be good. Right, we're now going to turn our attention to the um, naan. I forgot what it's called then. To the naan bread. Again, we've been using raw chicken and all the rest of it, so have a decent clear down. 
I'm going to wipe the table properly in a second. Um, all right, let's get rid of the board, put that side, give it a wash up. We'll have one minute, all right, just to sort yourselves out. Any questions, any problems, 100 meals yet? Yeah. Well done. Ferris. All right, good stuff. We're now going to do the naan. Now, this is comparatively simple, um, as you're going to see. I need to remind myself, it's terrible, isn't it, really? Right. This recipe makes around nine, oh, about nine, about five naan breads, okay? But it kind of depends, um, you know, how big they are, obviously, I guess. One thing you need to do, if you're cooking these now, all right, the naan bread, which, you know, you can do, um, your, your naan dough sticky. All right, well, that's not the end of the world. Um, one thing we need to do is give this a little knead, all right? So if it's sticky, uh, you need to, Add a tiny bit of flour, all right? So get a clean surface. You might need a little bit of flour, but not much, all right? Because if you add too much flour, then you're going to incorporate the flour and it's going to dry out. If yours is sticky, add a, a little finger full of flour and mix it. So at this point, a little bit of flour, this on the table, and you want to just give it a quick knead, not majorly, because there's no yeast in it. So we're not kind of really mixing anything. We're just you know, giving it a real quick mix. All right, so we, I'm talking a 10 second need. No more than that is needed, all right? That just gets the gluten activated. Right, that's all we need. What we're now gonna do is cut that into five. This is your call in the sense of this recipe is for five naan, but actually if you may have two enormous ones, then you do two, if you want, Six, then do six, you know, it's kind of completely down to you. I'm gonna do five, just because the recipe says five. All right, so make it, it's easy to cut, do it in a sausage kind of shape, and then just try and cut five as even as you can pieces. Doesn't matter too much, as long as they're roughly the same size. So as you know then, a naan bread is a, um, sort of a teardrop shape. Should be sort of a teardrop shape. That actually, in reality, is quite difficult to recreate. Um, because obviously when you roll it, it just goes to a, you know, kind of the shape it wants to, and do not worry about that. Yeah, cut it into four, absolutely terrible, that is a plan. Right, a few options now. If you're gonna cut these straight away, which is cool, um, these are actually designed to be cooked under the grill. Don't panic about that. If you haven't got a grill, you can fry them, which I can explain to you. No one needs to be told how to fry them, but if you do fry them, you get a frying pan, oddly enough, turn the heat on, but you don't add any oil at all. They're, they're dry fried. It is designed to go into the grill. All right, so with, with grilling, you open the door and turn the grill on. I'm just gonna very quickly move my camera completely, or at least this one. I'll try and show you, and let's turn it round. Oh, that's not pretty. Right, so with the oven, at least on mine, that is the grill setting there. And you, with the temperature, you turn it up to the absolute highest it can go. But what's odd about grilling, because the heat radiates, it can't behave, there's a little thing there that radiates down. You leave the door open, all right? So with grilling, you always leave the door open. So, all you're now going to do then is get a rolling pin. You can actually use your hands and just pat it out. It doesn't really matter, actually. But let's say we're going to use a rolling pin, a little bit of flour on each side, and you just want to roll it.
Okay, just flat. If I were to really show you the thickness, but it's not very thick, it will slightly puff up as well. How much water do you add? Uh, what to the to to what to the uh, to the 100 mils? Sorry, Jacob, 100 milliliters of water. Okay. Does he? Good for him. Um, do you know what I know he does, and that's kind of. Do you know what? I think it depends on the oven. And I'll tell you what, why it is. Some ovens, and I think like the ones we use at school, if you shut the door, it shuts off. It doesn't actually, um, it doesn't work. It, you know, it stops the grill. So maybe that's why I've always left the door open when you're grilling, to be honest. Yeah, I know he does. Yeah, I find that odd, that. I think it's the oven he's got. But what do I know, eh? Right, turn the grill on, full power. Roll out your arms and you're going to put them on a baking tray. Standard baking tray. It's likely you're not going to get them all in one go on one baking tray unless you've got a massive oven and a massive baking tray. Right, let me quickly talk to you about flavourings for these because notice we put nothing in here particularly. These literally just are a plain, just like bread, you know, a plain container, if you want to call it that, for, uh, for obviously a strongly, um, a strongly um, flavoured curry. Yeah, Ellie, so you're absolutely right, there we go. Um, in the recipe that I sent, what it says is, what you can do is you can melt some, when they come out when they're done, you can melt some butter, brush some butter after they're cooked, brush some butter over the top, and you can, for example, put some chopped garlic on the top, or you can put what's called nigella seeds, like nigella lawson, white nigella seeds. And what these are, I'll show you, these are quite nice. These are little black seeds, right? It's little black seeds like that. And they've got kind of a quite a fairly distinct oniony flavor, which is quite nice. But you can take it plain, there's no, there's no need for you to add, you know, you don't need to add, um, any, any topping at all, to be honest, you can just have them kind of as they are. Just by the way, these are obviously a basic naan. There are naan recipes that have yeast, and you need like an hour to, 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 to prove it, to raise it in the oven, or to raise it, you know, in the temperature. Um, so obviously we've gone for a quick version, obviously, because, you know, otherwise it's a bit odd looking at each other for an hour. All right, so what are we gonna do then? When the oven's nice and hot, we're gonna, guess what? Put them under the grill. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now, under the grill. I'm gonna do mine in turn. Give you a curry a stir if you need to. Mine's all calmed down a bit now. How much longer we got? Alexa, how much long, longer on the timer? You have 40 seconds left on your 10 minute timer. Okay, so that's gonna go off in a second. In your chia seeds, 100% you can. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, of course. So if, you, if you're not having this till later, um, like most people probably, is you can roll them out, put them in the baking tray, just leave them, and then when you're ready, chuck them under the grill and grill them either side, like, like you would toast, um, essentially, all right? Um, with this, we can make a judgment call, right? Because although the recipe says 10 minutes, if it's simmering nicely, you can do it longer if you want to. If you think the sauce is a bit thin, or the pepper's a little bit crunchy, then just leave it a little bit longer. Right, so Alexa, stop. I'm sure everyone knows this, but just, you know, so we know that chicken is done. We need, the chicken will be, or should be, cooked all the way through. Okay, so, I, so I'm gonna take a piece of chicken out. I'm gonna cut it in half. And I can see that the chicken is white all the way through. So I therefore know that this is cut, and that's why you cut it in even sized pieces, because if you did like, did all a wide variety of shapes, if you did do a wide variety of shapes, pick out the biggest chunk and then use that, um, you know, to, as a guide. All good? Right, fair. Excellent. If you like your sauce a bit thicker, simmer it a bit thicker. If you like, if, you, if yours has dried a bit, there's mine, so you fairly liquid. If you want yours a bit more saucy, so to speak, have a guess, put a bit, bit of splash of water in, all right, to the consistency that you want. Any questions, how are we doing? What, on the grill, Julie? 
grill on full power, and as logical as it sounds, until they're brown on one side, I mean, you turn them over and do the other side. Okay? They should be lightly brown, because they're not burnt or frazzed. That was silly, wasn't it? Oh, putting that one there. How is everyone? Is everyone good? Everyone all right? Any issues or problems? You're good? I'm good, you're good. Amazing. Yeah, so the naan bread keris is as long as it takes to, to brown. You should see it brown under the grill. All right, if your grill was like really hot, I didn't turn mine on until kind of fairly quick recently. It was it's only going to take a minute, two minutes to brown. Um, mine probably hasn't warmed up properly, so mine's going to take a few more minutes. Okay. Um, what did I say to you? All right, so we haven't quite finished yet. We've got another minute or so, and then we will finish because I, I think everyone's probably good. Um, and we've got to add something else to this, actually. That's a good point. That's a good point, but I'll say that in a second. Um, so next week will be the last week, not ever, but the last week of a half term, or I won't do it over a half term, and then we'll resume when we come back. So I plan for these to happen. Um, I plan for these to happen as long as everyone's in lockdown and we're not back at school. As soon as we're back at school, I need to stop because obviously we're quite busy at school. Um, although I'm busy now, to be fair. Um, all right, so also late on Thursday, um, although I'm doing the primary one on Thursday, in the daytime, I'm actually having a professional film person come. I didn't realise two doors down to me is a cameraman, which is very nice. So he's offered to come and do, to film kind of properly, and we're gonna do a three course Valentine's menu on Thursday, but that's gonna be put on YouTube as separate, not as a live, right? So kind of like a stage, not stage, but a filmed thing, all right, with hopefully good production, all right? So that should be good. Um, but there will be a primary on Thursday and a secondary on Friday. I don't know yet, I'll think about it over the weekend, all right, what we're gonna make. Okay, so um, the last thing we need to do then with our curry. Now my wife moans at me about this um, because there's obviously fats in here. But there we go. What we're going to add then? Oh, that's silly. Why don't do that? You want literally seventy-five mils, milliliters of cream and yogurt, but only once this is done. All right, so because you don't cook it too much, actually. So once you're happy that this is cooked and it's the consistency that you want, you put 75 mils. Now, 75 mils is a pain to measure in a measuring jug. Oh, I've got about my arm. Man, that's fine. Right now. So this is why you've got to keep your eye on everything, you see. Right, my naan bread. That's one side. Let's turn them over. Side two. Side. Uh, right, sorry, so 75 millilitres in tablespoons is five tablespoons. All right, so five tablespoons of cream, five tablespoons of yogurt, okay? And that goes in basically right at the end when you're happy with the, make sure the meat's done, etc., etc. So one, two, three, four, five. And actually, I'm not going to measure the cream because I've got a little pot of cream and this is 150 mils, so therefore I need half the pot. All right. Put a little bit, there we go, half the pot, boom, done. That's the yogurt done. Give that a mix in. Pot some spoon now. And you'll see this will kind of give it that nice creamy edge. Again, I'm not happy about the thickness, just simmer it a bit more and it will reduce. Right, let's have a little taste. Wicked, all good. Far superior than the stuff you buy at the supermarket, trust me. Okay. Um, I'm happy with that, so mine is done. If you have any left over, as I'm sure you probably will, because this is a fairly generous um, thing, this. Um, it will taste amazing tomorrow. All right, it's one of these things where if you make it and then keep it, because obviously the, it kind of soaks into the chicken. I'm gonna move back to the side, just to cool down. Just gotta finish the naan bread. I'm only gonna do one, just to show you very quickly. And then I think we're done. So any questions? 
Is everyone okay? Oh, good. I'm glad you're enjoying them. That's good. Yeah. So, I mean, just so you know, so the YouTube channel will carry on um, because it will. Um, but the live cook along is obviously quite pressured with time and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, we'll see where we go with that. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, Kingsman family, it was either, uh, to be blunt, um, didn't really matter. Um, but if, if there's a preference, I would do, as Kerry said, is do it when you're going to eat. So just, yeah, it's probably better. So it doesn't matter if you added it, it's no problem because both is fine. But it, with, the, with the yogurt and the cream, I'd heat it up again if you can have it later and then just add it to kind of finish it off. That's possibly better because sometimes it can go, the cream can go a bit odd, but it should be fine. Your, right, so the, I can put the written recipe later, he says. I should do it later or tomorrow, all right? Right, so my other side is cooked. All it means with, with, is with the butter, can I just very quickly show you, is, to be honest, I'm not gonna melt this. So what the recipe says is you melt some butter, brush the butter over the top. And if you've got any garlic or um, any uh, nigella seeds, at that point, you can put them on. i very quickly, because I've got a, a thing of butter, I'm gonna rub it over the top, because obviously the heat will melt it. Remember, these uh, naan breads are a quick naan, all right? These are not uh, fully fledged naan, but they certainly do the job. All right, and there's, so, and there we have our fairly easy naan bread with the Nigella seeds.